Hey everybody, it's Jason Bloha here. Let me get a sip of my coffee. All right. Give you guys a forearm shot. All right, let's talk about something. And when I say this, I'm saying this objectively. Um, saying it objectively because obviously I can just go throw on straps and deadlift and stuff myself if I need to. So it, it's not about me, it's about having standards and understanding what a lift is. And I'm not being a hater, I'm just calling facts. All right, a deadlift means that you pick up a weight off the floor, okay? You pick it up and you lock it out. We have standards for what an exercise is. Every exercise, there's a basic understood execution of it. Uh, and so when it comes to something like straps, if we are going to claim that we deadlift a certain amount of weight, that means that you need to be able to pick it up off the floor. That you need to be able to pick it up off the floor. Your body physically needs to be able to do so. Now, if we start talking about equipped and all this other stuff, then, and I'm gonna jump into that too and really make fun of the direction Strongman has gone, but if you can't grip it, then you can't pull it period right that is what a deadlift is and i'm going to get into a minute of how people use straps to do trick lifts to dip deadlift weights that they wouldn't be able to lift and they need the straps because their grip wouldn't be strong enough but they're not strong enough either uh, there's a lot of tricks people do for uh, we're seeing it on social media to deadlift 50 or 100 pounds more than they would actually be able to and straps are required for that so it, again, it's just trick lifts. It's not a true display of strength. Um, but when I state that, that therefore means that I, I really do mean that because it's not a case of, uh, well, just my grip giving out. No, you were not strong enough. And we know that grip uh, is not always about just your grip strength. Sometimes it has to do with upper back strength. In other words, sometimes grip will fail when upper back is giving out also. It can be your body's defense mechanism to certain things happening. Uh, so it has a lot to do with the nervous system also. And people aren't factoring that in. And then again, another thing, straps are one reason people get hurt a lot on the deadlift. I think it's a big factor for back injuries. All right. Now that aside, what I mean by that is if you can deadlift... 225, that's the most that you can pull off the floor completely raw with chalk, and you can put straps on a deadlift a thousand pounds. Your max is not a thousand pounds, your max is not 300 pounds. Your max is 225. That is what you can deadlift. And I know that that scenario would never happen, by the way, I'm fully aware of that. But in that extreme hypothetical, that person deadlifts 225. No ifs, ands, or buts about it because that's what you have to pick up. You've got to pick it up. It's not just hinging your back. Okay, because if we just wanted to test a, a hip hinge, we could, we could just create a full range of motion good morning, right? You could just say, well, we'll just do a good morning from, from 90 degrees off of pins and that could that, it would just be a hip hinge because that's what you're trying to make it into at that point. You know, it's just a hip hinge. You're using favorable leverages. All right. The issue we run into also with the social media is that people will do lifts that variations and things that they wouldn't normally be able to do. In other words, uh, some of us are really strong off the, off the bottom of the deadlift. We don't lose anything significant on a deficit. I, I can walk over on a stiff bar and, say a, and stand on a one inch plate. And my conventional pull is pretty dang close to what my normal meat legal deadlift would be on a deadlift bar. A lot of people, though, because of their leverages, are really weak off the floor. Um, and so those are the people who really benefit from sumo sometimes. All right, but here's the thing with sumo, with the sumo deadlift. The sumo deadlift is absolutely the hardest at the bottom. The conventional is not always the hardest at the very start. Case in point, otherwise people like me who could walk over with a stiff bar on a one inch and pull almost right about what we can pull very, very close on a deadlift bar, we wouldn't exist. But on a sumo though, it, it is absolutely the weakest point. People tend to stick off the floor, okay? Unless they don't have the hamstrings to lock it. So one thing that people like to do is to get the whippiest bar possible. See where I'm going? They'll get the whippiest bar they can, 
and then they'll stack thicker plates. So the thicker the plate, so even iron plates give more whip than the little thin calibrated plates like I, I use. There's a reason calibrated plates are used in competitions. It makes the deadlift slightly harder and it removes some of the whip. Now, obviously as deadlift bars get whippier and, and the weights get really heavy, it's gonna bend, but the goal is to reduce it a little bit. So what they'll do, they'll get whippy bars. Sometimes it'll be an, a, an Olympic bar, not, not a power bar or a deadlift bar. You'll see it all the time. But any whippy bar will do this and either use the thicker iron plates or use bumper plates. All right, you, you now have taken inches out of the bottom before the weight really hits. Sometimes they've already moved. If you look at some of those, they've sometimes bent the bar. Their hands have moved six inches before the full weight comes off the floor. That means that let's, let's say they throw 600 pounds on there. The 600 pounds hasn't fully come off the floor, the last plates. So there might be, you know, three inches up, there might be four to 500 pounds. It may be about the six inch mark, the full 600 pounds is on there. Well, they've also taken a version that is a shortened version, the sumo deadlift. They've taken out six inches of the heaviest weight, heaviest weight on the bar. They've done that out of the hardest part. They've reduced the mechanical tension. That's a cheat lift all the way around. In other words, in other words, their deadlift might be 500 pounds. Like if they were to walk over and test a true max conventional that they can lock correctly, because a lot of these guys who show up on social media can't lock their deadlifts either. You see that all the time. They're incapable of locking them, especially those trap bar pulls and stuff. You'll notice they skip the lockout because they can't. They can't lock it. They're not strong enough. But, you know, in this case, you'll see this with these, these sumos. Um, they're now, it, what, a 500 pound puller might pull 600 plus on that whippy bar with the bumper plates or the thick iron plates. Well, now they have to have straps because this is like 100 pounds more than their real deadlift. And they're using that smoother, whippier bar so they really can't grip it well. Of course they strap up. But that's a cheat lift. That's a 500 pound deadlifter pulling 600. It's nonsense nonsense then let's not even get into the whole strongman thing and this is why one of my problems with strongman i love the idea of strongman it is a fantastic concept for a sport but the way they've implemented it it is nothing more than a quick power lifting 2.0 i mean and if you watch the deadlifts they do how many of these guys like you'll watch them oh i can i can 605 in the event for 10 reps okay can they even deadlift 600 so that's not possible they couldn't. Yeah, it is because they're doing a bounce. Okay, they're doing a bounce lift. They're doing a touch and go, which is again, cheating. You move a lot more reps. They're only pulling the first rep, but they're wearing a deadlift suit that gives a massive amount of pop out of the bottom. Okay, they're using the figure eight strap so that grip is not a factor at all. So they get that pop out of the bottom and then they hitch it because they're not strong enough to lock it. So they have to hitch it and they use the momentum they're building from the suit to get it through the mid range. And then they don't have to worry about the issues with the, the grinding involved with the hitching because they've got the straps on. I would venture to say that some of the guys who you see who can do 600 for 10 or whatever at these, those events wearing all that stuff, if you were to have them go over with nothing but chalk and clothes and pull everything off, everything off, a belt, even they take their belt away, their suit, their straps, nothing but chalk, I bet you some of those guys would really struggle with 600. Even though at the event they pulled it for 10 reps, okay? bullshit we we shouldn't even call that a deadlift it should be called an exoskeleton strap bounce i think that that should be the appropriate name for that event no I'll call it a deadlift for us call it an exoskeleton strap bounce because they're wearing an exoskeleton and people who don't think those things gives a lot i've tried one i tried one literally 50 pounds over my 
deadlift max at the time, it flew up so fast that I almost fell over when it locked out. It exploded so fast I almost fell down. So that's how I feel about those, those deadlift suits. It felt like nothing. So at the time, my best pull was about 550. I wasn't even a 600 puller then. I put 600 on a bar and yanked it in that suit so fast that it felt off the floor, it felt like one plate on the bar. Maybe. It felt like air. It just exploded. And I almost hurt myself. It popped off the floor so fast. So <clears throat> these guys who are doing this, don't tell me you're not getting 100 pounds out of that suit especially with straps and hit no dude mm -mm. you guys are getting 100 150 pounds out of that stuff just call it like it is it's bullshit it's bullshit all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i'll talk to you guys next time